Yo, what's up? In this video, I'll talk about the 800 volt system. Is it pointless or is it gonna be the future? How good is the 800 volt versus the 400 volt cars? Well, I, I can't give you the answer, but at least I will share with you the information I know about these cars. So um, back in 2018, I made a video about the upcoming Porsche Mission E. And also I talk about Ionity's fast charging network, 350 kilowatts. So back then I claimed that 350 kilowatt is simply too fast. It had too many disadvantages. Uh, people, lots of people disagree with me. But um, also the problem with charging that fast is that you will have too high C ratings. You will cook the battery, you will degrade the battery more. And also that equipment, those chargers need to be uh, expensive compared to a 400 volt base, uh, not so powerful. And yeah, and also back then uh, Tesla, they, there was a conference call uh, Q1 2018. They also talk about future superchargers to be 200 to 250 kilowatts. Back then we had 150 kilowatt version two superchargers. And Elon also said that uh, you know 350 kilowatt is, is way too high. You're gonna cook the battery, <laughs> something like that. And then rewind back to today. And Taycan today peaks at 260 kilowatt after charging losses. And it means that it can actually charge from 2% to 80% in just 22 minutes. That is blistering fast. And then you get 450 kilometers of range, which is more than enough for most people. Model 3, on the other hand, peaks at 250 kilowatts. And then it goes from 7 to 77% in 22 minutes. So slightly slower, and then you get 400 kilometers of range. But these two cars are pretty top-notch when it comes to charging speed today. But uh, you probably heard it recently that uh, Porsche is coming out with some upgrades for Taycan already, some hardware and some software upgrades. And one of the software upgrades is that um, now, or soon enough, you can limit the charging rate to 200 kilowatt. Wait a minute, did I read it correctly here? Who made this script? 200 kilowatt, why would you go backwards? Well, think about this. When you are charging that fast, you are actually putting extra stress on the battery. And also there's more losses here, I'll come back to that. But it means that Porsche found out that not everyone needs to charge that fast. So they offer the user the ability to charge a little bit slower and then you preserve the battery more. Wasn't that the, the stuff I talked about two years ago that it was simply too fast? Mm? Mm? Okay, um, so let's look now at what is the benefit of 800 volt versus 400 volt? Well, one thing is that with lower, uh, current because the voltage is higher you get lower heat loss and then another advantage is that with the higher voltage you get more power into the battery more, more charging power more bragging power so if you look at heat loss here you know recently i made a video about um, charging loss in my model 3 and i actually did also one extra test with Taycan, and that's the lowest one there you see 800 volt that's a Taycan. And um, I found out that when Taycan is charging at Ionity, it actually has really good efficiency, charging efficiency. Whether this is due to uh, the higher voltage or not, I'm not sure. Well, I mean, it's of course, some of it is because of that. But uh, by the way, the, the Model 3 I charged was at Ionity and not at Tesla Supercharger. And the reason why I didn't charge it or test it at Tesla is because the number you get out of it is uh, not with fractions, so it would be too inaccurate. But it's close enough because at Ionity with Model 3, I was charging at 2.4C and then Taycan was at 2.8C, so it's close enough. And you see that despite that, uh, Taycan was more efficient. But we don't know if this efficiency is because of the high voltage, because technically you can take a 400 volt pack, like, like the Model 3 pack, and then just rearrange it. Some of the parallel go in serial, and then suddenly you have 800 volt system. And if you charge it at 250 kilowatt or 192 kilowatt, in theory, you should still get the same heat loss because this heat loss, wh what is this thing? Uh, imagine if you are walking, okay? Then the body temperature is hopefully 37 degrees Celsius. But then if you suddenly start running, you have power, higher power output, you will start sweating. And basically this is the same thing that happens that it's almost like the faster you charge the more the the the, the battery is running so then you have more heat loss so yeah okay but anyway so um and another another problem with the heat loss is that um 
Well, Porsche claims that with higher voltage, you have uh, better performance. And you guys know this. Uh, fully charged, they did this uh, demonstration along with Porsche and they launched uh, Taycan 30 times and no, no no degradation in I mean no no loss in power output but you guys know that they they took the time it wasn't very transparent how long they actually drew, draw out the whole thing but they launched in one direction and then they went back it's you know, almost like a cool down lap <laughs> and then they the guy talked a little bit and then they launch again so uh, it took a while, but at least there was no no degradation in power output after lots of launches there. And then I tried to simulate that by doing the same thing. Well, not the same thing. I did it in, in Germany at night. But for me, I showed everything. It was real time. And I didn't have any cool down lap back to the starting point or whatever. I would just launch and launch and launch and launch. And then after 27 or something launches, I started seeing some uh, some reduced power. So it means that a well-designed Model 3 can actually keep up with a with a 800 volt based system. So to me, it seems like the 800 volt architecture is not really that much of an edge there. And then what about when you go tracking? Well, uh, you guys probably heard about it that uh, some guy with a tie can draw around Nordschleife uh, New Beginning, and after one and a half laps, the the battery was pretty cooked and the consumption was super high. It was was even over one thousand watt hour per kilometer, insanely high. And then also just happened to happen recently that a guy named Misha he drove a Model Three Performance. It wasn't his car around the track and even after one full lap uh, the Model 3 battery wasn't that hot uh, so Model 3 could probably do several laps without overheating uh, probably the reason why Model 3 battery didn't overheat as much as Taycan is because Model 3 is more efficient and lighter so that's why it can actually go fast uh, so it means that you know the 800 volt system um, how do you put this the 800 volt system is probably better but there are other ways to solve it. For example, by making a more efficient car, like a Model 3, then you overcome some of those, those disadvantages with 400 volt versus 800 volt. But okay, what about the higher charging power? Because you need to push the voltage to 800 volt to be able to go 350 kilowatt. Yes, that's true. But again, Taycan is charging at only 260 kilowatt. And uh, you know, you have to know that the CCS standard today, CCS2, is maximum 500 amp. So that's why when I go to an IONTI charger with Model 3, it's capped at 500 amps. I get only 192 kilowatts. Whereas if I go to supercharger, I can go higher. Tesla allows higher currents. So there I can see a maximum two, uh, 680 amps to get 250 kilowatts. But uh, as long as you have a, a 400 to 450 uh, based uh, volt based pack, let's say like uh, e-tron or iPACE or uh, yeah, some of these other cars nowadays, then you can actually, if with 500 amp, you can go as high as 225 kilowatt. And that means that that speed is already very good. Because keep in mind that the high kind of mentioned in the beginning that charge uh, today, uh, that's 185 kilowatt average power over that charging session. And then the Model 3 averaged only 140 kilowatt. So it means that there is actually potential to uh, have a more flatter curve and then still boost the overall charging speed by a lot without going insane. Uh, uh, basically what I'm saying is that instead of having some insane 350 kilowatt peak rate that you probably can't sustain too long anyway. How about go for more of a e-tron approach where you have a flatter curve. E-tron don't go bananas. E-tron goes, it starts at around 130 kilowatt and then it slowly ramps up to 150 kilowatt towards uh, 75%. Uh, and you know, e-tron owners, they are super happy with the cars. They drive on long trips, they supercharge at Ion uh, they, they, they charge at Ionity and usually the car finished charging before they finish the burger or whatever. So that's actually real world practical proof that you don't need insane charging speed. Again, this was something that was discussed in my video two years ago. People who never driven uh, something like Taycan or uh, Model 3 or e-tron before, they claim that the faster the better. The faster the better, but they didn't really understand how it actually works when you go on the long trips because I guess they drive fossil, they have the fossil mindset. So, uh, so many people say that, you know, Bjorn, you're wrong, you're wrong. 
but in the end, I think I wasn't that wrong after all. When if you ask people with Taycan Model 3 e-tron, how was it really? But okay, anyway, what about uh, uh, the disadvantages with 800 volt? Because 800 volt system has not only advantages. So it's more expensive to build those chargers and those chargers are beefy chargers. They have to output 350 kilowatts. So um, that's probably why Ionity is so expensive, you know? So, um, but also, you know, Gilenko Talk, they started rolling out these 150 kilowatt fast chargers recently. I see lots of them. That is amazing. Delta chargers. And uh, I asked uh, Gilenko Talk about this because, you know, those Delta chargers, by default, they are 400 volt based, but you can spec it when you order it. You can spec it to be 800 volt, but you have to pay extra. So I asked Gilenko Talk, those fast chargers around Norway, those Delta chargers, are they 400 volt or 800 volt? Unfortunately, they are 400 volt. So it seems like Gerenko Contact they didn't want to take that extra cost or maybe maybe to keep everything as cheap as possible because it's actually very cheap to charge at Gerenko Contact. Um, it's actually ch it's cheaper to charge there than Ionity, depending on what deal you have. So they had to keep the cost down and they went for 400 volt. So, um, but okay. Um, and then also the problem again is that if you want to charge a Taycan, on 400 volt charger, you need a, a, a converter because the voltage on those chargers is simply too low to support the 800 volt pack. So uh, by default, Taycan comes in 50 kilowatt converter and then you can also opt it for 150 kilowatt and that's only 400 euros, it's a no-brainer. But it means that you actually have one extra step of conversion, which means one extra step of loss. So when I mentioned that, Taycan is really efficient when it's charging at 800 volt system, but how efficient is Taycan when it's charging at 400 volt? We don't know. I guess I have to try that one day. But that means that for the for the money you pay for kilowatt hours at Grand Contact or Fortum, you actually get less because some of that goes into heat. Well, it's nice in winter, I guess. But I also think that you know those 50 kilowatt fast chargers from FASEC, ABB or whatever, they will still exist for a long time. And those are 400 volt based system. So you know, if you want to drive from Oslo to North Cape with a Taycan, you still have to visit lots of 400 volt chargers. And it's probably going to be like that for a long time. I don't think the development of 800 volt will just explode. So, um, but I think those um, Delta chargers, uh, the, those uh, shared 150 kilowatt or uh, 2 times 75 kilowatt, I believe they will be more and more common. We see already now the, they roll out lots and I don't know how expensive it is, but they seem to be affordable for the charge point operators to roll out. So hopefully we see more and more of those. So based on all this stuff then, is 400 volt good enough? Well, my claim is that it is actually good enough. I'm sitting in the Model 3 now, which is, again, one proof that 400 volt is good enough. It can almost match Taycan when it comes to charging speed. It can roughly match it when it comes to performance and long-lasting performance, hammering, whatever, and so on, you know? Um, and the losses aren't that great uh, compared to... I mean, the losses aren't that crazy anyway. So... Um, you know, EVs usually consume about 150 to 200 watt hour per kilometer today. And that's not going to change. Even in 10, 20 years, EVs will still consume like that. Uh, so, and also, like I mentioned, you know, the, uh, even at 400 volt, you can uh, probably achieve about 200, 225 kilowatts, depending on how you configure the pack. But based on uh, the consumption that you have, that won't go up, hopefully and the, the, the maximum power on 400 volt, then I believe that that is already good enough because in the future, hopefully, if we get 150 kilowatt uh, hour batteries, to charge from uh, almost empty to 80%, um, if you get 200, 210 kilowatt average, uh, it shouldn't take more than half an hour. And then you get 750 kilometers of range. And then with a 150 kilowatt hour battery, you well, you have almost a thousand kilometer range anyway. You know, at least 700 to a thousand kilometers of range. So basically, it means that uh, as long as the battery is large enough in the future, then uh, I don't really see the benefit of 800 volt. And also another thing is that um, you know, 
well, you guys remember when I did the, the charging loss video, with the Model 3, I tried to charge it at 50 kilowatts. And when you charge it at 50 kilowatts, the, the charging speed is so low that um, there was not that much heat loss. Again, when you imagine you running ra rather than walking, you know, it's almost like you're just jogging gently then, then so you don't sweat that much and then you don't have that much heat loss. So that's basically what is going to happen in the future when you have bigger battery is that they don't have to work that hard and then the, the losses is not that great anyway. So, um, and in the end, I think people care more about pricing than about charging speed when it comes, to, just look what happened with Ionity. So I think actually, uh, just a thought, uh, if Ionity would have, um, let's say if, if Ionity would also have some very well marked 150 kilowatt fast charger, 400 volt based, you know, uh, and then at those chargers, you will only pay 40 cents per kilowatt hour, even with drop-in. I think people would charge there because it, maybe even uh, some guy with Taycan who can, let's say he doesn't have subscription anymore, he might also charge there because he doesn't have to rush or he wants to save money. And in the end, he's, he's, he's not... Uh, it's not that much of and the gain in uh, the the gain in money is not that big of a deal something like that i don't know if that makes sense yeah so um again I, i'm not going to conclude anything and say that you know for uh, 800 volt sucks uh, or 400 volt is the is the way to go but to me it seems like the 800 volt has um, some disadvantages and then the advantages with 800 volt is not that great i could be wrong of course i don't know but what do you guys think? Huh? Is 800 volt the future? Or do you think 400 volt is the future? So it's almost like, how about uh, 110 volt system in America versus 220 volt system in, in the rest of the world, right? <laughs> okay, but I, anyway, I think that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.